Hi guys, so I just wanted to give you sort of an update on where I'm currently at. I'm almost seven weeks per show now. Uh, so I just thought it'd be good to give like a bit of a round up and just for in case anyone else is looking at competing in the future and they want to know what it's like in going into off season or if anyone else at the same stage I'm at and just wondering if like what they should be doing and stuff. Um, so just running through a few points such as like training, nutrition and reverse dieting. Uh, posing and uh, recovery post show and just recovery in general uh, from training now I'm doing a lot harder training so I'm going to go in the training side first um, and like I said I'm almost seven weeks post show now after coming off the back of five shows so it's quite a heavy season uh, in terms of on my body emotionally and mentally and everything else so um, after the show we decided to have like a week, week and a half off training and then a really steady run into that and then we started a six week rotation so we're currently on week four of the six week rotation training cycle um, keeping my rep ranges up to about sort of, it's always a failure but typically 15 to 20 reps one set of each exercise and just really pushing it to failure and really getting the most maximum muscle, um, my muscle connection and just fatigue basically, just making sure their muscles are really working. Um, and cardio wise I have decided this uh, off season to keep it in, um, just for two reasons really. Uh, one is to keep my cardiovascular health really good, uh, so when I am training and doing these long sets I can push myself and it's not my um, cardio that's failing before my uh, muscle so we always want the muscle to be failing first not my cardio system um, and the other is just obviously just to keep the fat at bay so while I'm e increasing my calories um, we want to make sure that basically the um, fat isn't going on it's lean gains and it's not like a bulking phase as people always say um, so always pushing to the limits and always pushing to failure in training basically and just keeping on that and keeping that intensity up. Very short rest periods, um, I, work, I train in a space that's really sort of small um, so we're not sort of wasting time, it's very very efficient and very effective. So moving on to sort of nutrition side of things then, like I've just touched on I am reverse dieting out of the shows at the moment. My calories were crazy, crazy low uh, while I was competing, so I was really lucky on that. Um, and since having my blood analysis done a few weeks ago, we know that we're, I'm quite insulin sensitive. So you can see Eval at S20. Um, so this is going to be interesting. I'll get my results back in about three or four days. So yeah, um, really looking forward to getting the. I can handle a lot of carbs. But they have to be the right type of carbs. So we've learnt in the past few weeks that basically uh, working with my coach, I've learnt that uh, the low GI carbs such as sweet potato and oats and things like that, rather as opposed to like white rice um, and anything just really really fast carbs and fast sugars um, works better for me. So keeping those low GI carbs in there for the majority of the day just to keep my blood level blood sugar levels stabilised. So reverse dieting wise, I'm currently on around 400 gram of carbs, around 100 gram of fats and 200-220 gram of protein a day. Um, what you've got to understand is that is a lot of food, I'm not going to lie, but it's, took, it's been increased over the weeks gradually and we've assessed how I'm looking. Um, a little bit on the scales, but more how I'm looking along the way. So um, we just increase it as we see fit, basically. Um, reverse dieting is really hard because you've not got a goal, an end goal to go towards. Uh, when I came out of the shows, I did book myself two photo shoots. Um, obviously, I own a photography company, so it's really easy for me to do that. But I booked that, and that really helped me have a little mini goal to come off the back of the shows. And then for the last six weeks, it's just been basically persevering with it. Even though my hunger levels have been quite high still, um, I still have to keep to my macros and just persevere with that. And it's just, I know it will pay off in the long run. Um, I don't really want to go into the next season uh, having another 20 kilos to lose like I did this time round. So that's my motivation for that, basically. Longevity and sustainability. 
not putting fat on straight away. We want lean gains and we want to make sure the carbs are going inside the muscle, not basically as fat cells. I've worked away quite a bit with my job as a photographer um, and you have to adapt to this. Um, so it has been a little bit easier being off season but I've kept the plan. Uh, and I took all my meals with me. I recently decided to go with Nutrifast to basically prep all my meals and that's just helped me keep really consistent and almost accountable because I don't have to think about what I'm going to eat. I just pick the two up and go. Um, it's not the same food every day like it was in prep but it's just a lot easier for me and it takes the mental stress off me having to make that choice basically um, and working away is a lot easier. Off plan meals then, a lot of people now ask me, you know, do you get to go out, do you get off plan meals, do you get a cheat meal? Well first I hate the word cheat meal, I'm just not a treat, I'm not a dog. That's just the way I like to approach it, I'm quite a structured person. So for me, I don't call it a cheat meal, I just go out and generally have a steak and some vegetables and potatoes. Don't really get to the habit of treating food like it's... Um, a pleasure as such. It's I like food, I just like a lot of it, a lot of clean food. Um, so not that I'm not saying I'm not allowed off plan meals, but I'm also saying that it doesn't bother me if I don't have one. I'd just rather be full um, and satisfied basically. And I think for me that's a more healthy way of approaching things. Um, and yeah, everyone's different I guess. Some people really like certain things some people can do without. One thing I would like to mention is uh, working with my coach Nick um, on the off plan thing and going away, deviating away and expanding my nutrition beyond what I was eating on prep. It's working with him to be really important to build my confidence and trust up within myself not to eat just everything in sight because I have been really hungry still despite eating a lot of calories. So I think it's took me probably a good six, seven week to do that. Um, so just having those conversations with him, um, but not depending on him to make a choice for me, basically. He's helped coach me and he's done what a coach should do, empowered me to make my own choices and guided me along the way and helped me figure out what's going in my head. Um, so that's really good, but it just takes time to adapt. Uh, I've spent 20 weeks eating a certain way, and just to expect me to, or you know, anyone to go from one extreme to the other is just not healthy for body or mind. So I think that's important to expect to have a transition period in this time when you're coming into off season. I think it's just about making sensible and balanced food choices. Um, for your goals I suppose. I know that next year I want to compete and I want to do better than this year so making the most sensible options that are going to make me better for next year is really really important for me basically um, and making sure that I bring my best next year. I'm already thinking about stepping on stage and I've got that vision in my head of what I'm going to look like next year so to me there's no point in doing all the work that I've just done. I'm going to keep on it and I'm really, really motivated to get on that stage right now, next year, even though I've just finished competing, I'm just really excited. So, hey, it's just making the right choices for myself. So, obviously, when you're in prep, um, you pose every day, and I would do it twice a day, to be honest, sometimes, because I really want to get it bang on. And I think, looking back, I really did improve from August, when I first started competing, through to when I did the two British finals, in October, I massively, massively improved. I had a posing coach, um, which helped as well, so Claire really helped me. But I, but I was practicing once to twice a day, and we really, really put a lot of effort into my posing, and I think it really showed on the stage. Every show, I felt like I improved, and my confidence improved, and my presentation improved, even to the last show. From my routine, I did the same routine in the last two British finals and I feel like it improved one week to the next, 100%. So, posing is something that I decided to keep in. I, I had about a month off it and we've just started reintroducing that again. Um, 
and we're going to be practicing every week or at least every other week and just looking at different ways we can do things so what we've spent uh, the last sort of six seven weeks doing is analyzing how the pros do it and um, if you want to be like a pro you've got to act like a pro it's, that's what I always get told by Nick my coach um, and analyzing how other competitors in my women's bodybuilding class do it as well so looking at that and then looking at how I performed on stage um, I've had access to the videos of my stage um, from the British final of my stage presentation so we've analysed those a few times so now it's time to put that into practice so, uh, with regards to posing we're going to basically make sure that um, we keep that in there and next year I'm going to hit stage just absolutely 100, 1000% 1, on it with the posing, um, even more than this year. And just, I think it just needs to feel fluid and like I'm just really comfortable getting into those poses. So the transitions need to be like really perfect um, and suit my body type. That's the most important thing. So that's what we're going to be working on in December. So in terms of recovery, we all know that to grow muscle, um, you've got to recover correctly. So that's, I'm approaching that in a few different ways basically, so one of those is sports therapy and everyone thinks of, I, I think people think of sports therapy when they've injured themselves they need to go get a sports treatment but I tend to have at least one a week, sometimes two, sometimes three when I'm actually on prep um, but at the moment we're doing sports therapy just to treat an existing injury on my knee but also we're testing out um, some tricep treatments, so with my coach Nick who's also a sports therapist um, we're doing some um, basically stretching out the triceps to encourage muscle growth because if your muscles are basically, um, you'll be able to explain better than me, but the fibres are crossed and they're not straight, they're not going to grow correctly so we also do a flush on my legs as well if I need it from training um, so basically straighten everything out so it can grow better. Also sleep is something I've never very, been very good at even from being a kid and that's something I'm currently trying to work on so sometimes uh, life gets busy right and I'm still doing cardio in the morning um, three to four days a week but I have to assess basically uh, whether I'm getting enough sleep and I would prioritise sleep over cardio and catch up cardio later if I need to just because I think that that's going to help with recovery, performance in the gym which therefore helps with um, obviously growing muscle because you can lift heavy, you can lift more, just performance generally up uh, and if I'm recovering quicker I can go again sooner so it's a, it's a lot better to get sleep in my opinion. Um, so the other thing that we've basically um, use as part of my recovery post show is I went to get my blood analysis done uh, so I got an athlete pro analysis by Eval uh, they were up in Sheffield so I went down there and um, we found a few interesting things out about that it was just a general health check because obviously competing takes a lot out of you but um, luckily Nick my coach has got the knowledge and qualifications and experience of reading things like this so if it wasn't for him I probably wouldn't have understood it but what we did with the results was um, we basically looked at the three main things so one was insulin sensitivity to see how sensitive I was to carbs which I am very sensitive to carbs so that's both good and bad um, I can manipulate them very easily so we changed them to the right types of carbs as I mentioned earlier um, so it also um, looked at, I'm just going to reference this here so we pushed the percentage of carbs for me from um, a mixture of low and high GI to predominantly low GI carbs um, so it could help stabilise and maintain my blood sugar levels because I was starting to get a bit like headed throughout the day and sometimes in training and that's just basically sweet potatoes sorted it right out um, so pretty much on sweet potato and oats a lot of the day now uh, so that's really helped 
Um, we also look to my oestrogen and testosterone levels. Uh, naturally, when you compete, your oestrogen does drop a lot. Um, so we're just keeping a monitor on that and I'm going to go back and have another blood works done probably um, January, February time before I start prep again. Um, and then the other thing we looked at was my overall cholesterol profile. Um, noting that I did have a steak the day before as well, which is going to influence things. Um, and actually the fourth thing, and I said it was three, but fourth, uh, we noticed that my haemoglobin levels were quite high, which means I've got a lot of, basically if I can understand this right, a lot of um, oxygen in my blood, I think, yeah. Um, so that means I can recover from basically anything cardiovascular quite quickly, which is really good because that means I can lift for longer. So that explains why I've got a good endurance in my rep ranges. So we aim for like maybe 10, 15 reps, but I'm sometimes going like at the moment 20, 25 reps and I'm not getting too puffed out. So that's really good and that explains that endurance side of things. That may have come from practice when I was younger when I competed in swimming, I don't know. Um, I'm not really an endurance sport person but uh, that just that's just how it's looking. So yeah, that was good news as well. Um, so I think that's kind of it for what I've been doing and what I'm doing going forward. Um, I'm going to do a separate video actually on nutrition and mine around the festive period because um, I know for a lot of people that is a problem and it's been a problem for me in the past but with Nick's help, uh, my coach's help, I think I've pretty much hopefully got it nailed, who knows it's not here yet but we're going to do a little chat about that and talk about how we approach that and how we're looking to approach that for me. Um, so if you liked this video, obviously just keep watching out for more tips, uh, more training videos and I'm going to keep these updates going just so you can follow my journey to the world next year um, and hopefully see me win. So thanks for watching.